We thought in the crappy situation of the coronavirus was the perfect time to talk about dumping our black and gray tanks. It is actually the perfect time for us to dump our gray and black tanks. And by perfect time, we mean we have to do it <laughs> we have to today. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> we noticed that they were filling up yesterday, but we waited until today so that we could film it all for you guys and share it. You're welcome. <laughs> actually, one of uh, the things that we had a lot of questions about owning our first RV was dumping the black and gray tanks. So we learned a lot of things from our neighbors at RV parks, from the rally, from uh, online forums, forums yeah. and we're hoping that you're coming to Photo RV today to get those answers and we're hoping that in some small way we can help you guys as well. And our way is going to look a little bit different than what your way is going to look. Everybody's RV is slightly different and what we've noticed over the years is that the manufacturer doesn't uh, put every possible change into their manuals. As a matter of fact, they leave a lot of things out completely in the manual. So even if you're a good book reader and you go in and you read every line by line, you're still left saying, well, what about X, Y, and Z? My particular rig, it seems like the models change so often that, that they, they just can't seem to keep up with all the iterations of the systems. Right. So we're going to do our best to get you on your way with yours. And uh, we're going to start in the kitchen. Yes, we're going to start mm. talking about dumping the gray tanks. And work our way down. <laughs> so behind this cupboard door is where our convenience center is located. In our case, we call it the inconvenience center. We've found it to be inaccurate in measuring our tank levels. However, Right now they are all showing, this is our black tank one, our black tank two, our gray tank, and our gray tank two. They are all showing completely full. Uh, we took the time last night to just top off everything as much as we could, putting clear water into our black tanks as much as necessary, as much as we could, so that we can get a really good flush of those tanks today. We will come back and talk a little bit more about that after we're done flushing out the tanks, see if they've, uh, if the sensors have actually been able to tell the levels have changed. One big excitement for us here in the bathroom is toilet paper. We have toilet paper. Don't tell anyone. All right. So tip number one that we did not know about um, is that if you hold the lever down part way so you can flush the toilet that's pushing it down all the way if you hold it down part way you will fill the bowl the toilet bowl and the reason that's important is because just like that we have really we have kind of slow water pressure right now so but you can fill it about to there is probably good for the next person coming in behind you. The reason I say that is because one of the number one questions people have about their RV toilet is what kind of toilet paper should they be using? Should it be marine? Should it be biodegradable? Um, we have learned when we were at the rally last year, uh, one of the gentlemen there was um, presenting and he works with all the plumbing on the RV. He said, use whatever toilet paper your heart desires. However, you must use lots of water with it. The water will break it down just fine. It'll travel and pass through just fine, but you have to use a lot of water. So his recommendation was to always fill the toilet bowl after you're done, after you've flushed everything down, go ahead and leave plenty of water in there for the next person. And you should be fine with whatever toilet paper you want. The problem with using the marine grade uh, or RV grade is that it is so incredibly thin that most people use double. And so then you're back up to where you were with a two ply of something brand name from the store. So that's one thing that really made us feel good about, um, about using whatever toilet paper we wanted and not spending the extra money on that RV toilet paper as well. Uh, we like to put in our tank 
some type of enzyme. It will help to eat the solids away and it's forming good bacteria in your black tank. You do not want to put chlorine or bleach or anything down in your black tank. That will kill the bacteria um, and then there won't be anything in there to eat the solids. So drop one of these little packets down there once a week maybe. Um, you'll, get, you'll get into your own habit of what works well for you and the amount of people that are using your facilities. You need to think of that black tank as your stomach you need to have good bacteria in there at all times and you don't want to do anything that would eliminate that bacteria it was recommended to us to use this type of a toilet bowl cleaner and when you clean your toilet you're going to want to clean all parts of it go down the tube with your brush as well so that all parts of it are clean so that brings us to another important point uh, I think everyone will have a vent and fan in their bathroom. Do not, do not have that open when you are using the restroom, when you are cleaning the toilet, or flushing the toilet. Wait until after you've flushed, then go ahead and open your vent and turn on your fan. If you do it any other way, you're going to draw air up out of that tank and into your RV. And from what I've heard, it's not fun. You don't want that smell going inside of your RV. So make sure that you always have that shut um, until you are done using the toilet or cleaning the toilet. Then go ahead and um, open it all up and get it fresh for the next people. We also keep in the bathroom uh, a gallon of water or so. Uh, just, this isn't actually drinking water, so it's just from the tap. But just in case we need to uh, use the toilet as a rest area stop uh, when we're traveling, it just gives us that quick moment to run out, use our own RV, and then we can get back on the road. So when you do that, you're just gonna want to put a little of this water uh, in the bowl also and um, let it go down. When you get to your final destination, remember you're gonna need to add that extra water into your black tank. Okay, let's go outside. There's a couple of things that you should have before you start. One is a siphon valve, which protects against backflow. We'll talk about that a little bit more uh, when we start doing our work here. But also a very good pair of gloves. We uh, use reusable gloves and we wash them afterwards. A lot of people use disposable, that's up to you. We're gonna start in the rear of the RV. We have two black tanks, as you might have heard me say earlier in the kitchen. One is for our rear toilet and one is for the front toilet. So they work a little bit differently in that in the rear, we have all the drains that are in that bathroom, the sink and the shower, those drain directly into the black tank that is back here. So we're gonna do it a little bit differently and you'll see why. So we've got the hose set up here. This is our sewer hose. We use Camco and we have um, several of these Clearview adapters and there are also swivel adapters as well. And uh, just in case you want to just go and grab them, we'll have all of those links in the description below this video uh, so that you can just go and grab them. Like I said, we, we are very happy with the ones we have. This Sidewinder is also uh, made by Camco too. Um, but again, you know, whatever, whatever you choose, whatever you find works for you is good. So I'm going to connect this end on here. as tight as I can, right up till it, it just, you'll see where the little pegs go in. And then Craig has set up for me this other end going right into the ground sewage. We always make sure we have something heavy on that corner because uh, you don't ever want it to pop off and start spewing sewage all over. So right now we have a heavy box of tools and such on it, probably about 15 pounds, um, just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Usually we use a, a rock or something if we're at a uh, campground that has some nearby. So we've attached our gray hose to the flush inlet 
on the rear end of the RV here. This one is for the back toilet. And if you follow our hose around, you'll see that we've got our si siphon valve on here to protect the water for everyone. And what I'm gonna do is just turn this on part way and I'm gonna release the black tank here. This valve pulls straight out, which is different than our one up front, but here we go. I'm gonna pull this one straight out. Okay, now it's recommended that we turn it up. And we're gonna let that tank, that black tank drain. A lot of people uh, find it odd that we use the clear pieces for our tubing. Maybe you can't handle the truth the truth. But in all seriousness, that helps us out tremendously. For us to know that it is done draining or uh, if it's draining clear, those are very important things and all parts to a good dump. If this is truly offensive to you, the whole dumping process, uh, then maybe RVing isn't right for you because it is a very important piece to RVing and to the health of your RV and to the health of the humans that you have in the RV with you. So I kind of look at it as a labor of love and uh, I joke about it a lot, but it is kind of fun to know that you've cleaned everything really well and that you're ready again. And for me, I love that this is a part of the maintenance for the rig that I can do myself. I don't need Craig to tell me every step of the way, although, I do discuss it with him quite often and make sure I'm doing it right. It's been nice to have something that I can do and help out with maintaining the rig. It's suggested that at this point, when it's running clear, to go ahead and shut the shutoff valve back. So we're gonna push it back shut while we have the water, the hose water running in and let it build up into that black tank and fill it even. So we're gonna see if our uh, tank monitor will show us if it's filling and uh, when it shows filled or when we feel like it's filled we're going to go ahead and dump it again if everything goes right we should find some more debris in there that needs to come out okay. currently we have the black tank closed and we're running that water in to flush the black tank and so we thought we'd come in and see what our black tank 2 is showing and right now it's showing a third full it was showing full before we started this process, so it apparently is reading somewhat of its level. So we're gonna give it a few minutes and hope that we can get it up to full and then give it one more good flush through there. We're all full, so we're heading outside to turn off that gray hose and let the rest of the water drain out. Here we go. had that wrong we're not turning off the gray hose yet we're letting the water come out of our black tank so it should really come out fast that's a full tank of clear water Looks like the black tank is pretty much emptied, so we're going to turn off the gray hose flush and let the rest of it drain out. So now we'll put the gray hose uh, on the front flush inlet for the front toilet. Okay, so now that it's done draining, we're gonna make sure we close the black tank valve here, which is just pushing it in. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. And then we'll get this hose off because we're gonna use it in the front. 
and make sure you replace the cap on the ground sewage. Just screws right in there and you're all set. Because we have two toilets, we just did the rear one. Now we're going to do the front one. And if you remember, I said it's a little bit different than the rear one. There's just a couple of extra steps at the end because we have gray tanks to uh, empty also in the front. So we've already got the sidewinder, that black gate looking thing is set up. We've got the sewage hose set up and into the ground sewage. We've got it attached at our sewer tube and we are ready to start. The gray hose is in our wet bay here now because that is where the flush inlet valve is here for the front toilet. So we've got that attached. So we're going to start the water just a little bit like we did the last time. Then we're gonna pull the gate valve under the RV. It's actually under our slide here. We will come over and pull the release valve for the black tank, which is also in our wet bay. And at that point, when all of that is running out, then we're gonna go ahead and turn up the hose water just a little bit more. But we always start that hose water just a little bit slow and then turn it up after we've got both of the both the gate valve and the valve in the wet bay open at the same time. Here we go. Okay, flush water going on a little bit. Over to the gate valve, we're going to open that. And uh, this one opens parallel to the rig, so you've got it yours will, yours will be just how it is. Everybody's is a little bit different. And then I'm going to go into the wet bay and release the black tank valve there as well. Right here. And we pull that one also. Then we're gonna slowly turn up that water for the gray flush. So the water is flushing out of our front black tank. It's showing clear right now. So we're gonna go ahead and shut the valve for the black tank and let it fill up like we did in the back and give it another good wash. Here we go. Where it should be and we're gonna let the tank fill up. About 10 minutes or so it's gonna take for ours. Right now the sensor is not responding to the fact that it should be empty. So we're gonna think about 10 minutes, uh, we'll probably do it to fill the tank. So we've let the water run into the black tank for about 10 minutes, a little bit longer, uh, but since we don't have the advantage of knowing exactly how full that tank is, we're gonna go ahead, call that full, turn off the gray flush water, which goes into the wet bay here, and then we're gonna pull both black tank valves and let that drain out. So the black tank is done with its second flush um, and now we're just going to pull the two gray release valves for the uh, first and second gray tanks and that will further flush out our sewage hose and what we've found out is that our gray tank one is for our shower and sink in the bathroom and gray tank two is exclusively the kitchen sink uh, i love to have those go through because they're generally pretty clean water and my um uh, gray tank two, which is the kitchen sink, usually adds a lot of suds going through there. It just makes me feel better to know that all of that's going through that sewage hose before we go ahead and pack it up, which will be after we're done with the gray tanks draining. Should take about 10 minutes, maybe 15 to drain these two tanks. The gray tanks are both done draining down into the sewer. So we are going to close all the valves in the wet bay now, the black, the gray, and the gray too.
Now that those are shut, we can safely go under the rig and shut the gate valve for our black tank. Now that that's done, we can remove the sewer hose. Always remember to put your black cap back on the end of your sewer tube and we'll put all of our equipment away, wash our gloves well, and that will be one more great dump in the books. Just remember, there's nothing like a good dump. <laughs> there's nothing like the satisfaction of a good dump.